Hello. Hi everyone, can you give me a little attention? <laughs> so today's day is brought to you by Dojima Network and HyperSign. Uh, Dojima Network is a layer one blockchain uh, which is used for managing cross-chain liquidity right now which is managed through uh, say bridges. It's a different approach managing cross-chain liquidity on layer one blockchain itself. Uh, they will talk more about it and tell you how does it work, what is it. Uh, so Happy ID, how did Happy ID came up? Happy ID is a long uh, run initiative of HyperSide which is basically to empower students uh, and everyone who is trying to build in Web3 space. We have been doing this from 3 years now. So today we are also going to announce a hackathon. We will come to that later on. First we will start with Dojima Network doing a hands-on uh, workshop for you guys. They will tell what Dojima Network is, how does it work, what can you build on it and what are the use cases. So I will uh, give it up now to Bhagat uh, Reddy is the CEO and co-founder of Dojima uh, Network. He will take you through a hands-on workshop on the Uh, Web3 it's all started in 2008 which is Bitcoin so which allows user to transfer token other than that you cannot do uh, execute some logic on Bitcoin chain so that's where Ethereum has come up uh, with new ideas that you can automate some logic via instructions that you can execute your code uh, which other than you can without transferring tokens other than transferring tokens you can execute logic and slowly because of uh, fee congestion and high fees on the chain uh, during high traffic people started uh, facing high fees issue then a lot of chains has come up uh, to solve this issue and slowly liquidity is, is started flowing to other chains. So what Dojima is trying to solve is from developer's perspective. So uh, you see nowadays a lot of chains, different languages and different architecture and different uh, advantage over the other chain. So from developers, you see when there is an adapt on different chain and you see if it is hit on other dap, other chain, the dap, and you want to you know deploy the same concept on different chain. And then you see Solana, it's built on trust. You have to develop on trust if you have developed something on Ethereum or EVM compatible chain which is Solidity. You don't know whether it works or not on this Solana because it's built on Rust and you have to write your Solana program library or the contract kind of thing on Solana using Rust. And if you see RV or Polkadot, Polkadot is a uh, relay chain uh, where you have uh, substrate substrate chains surrounded by uh, surrounded of Polkadot uh, which you call child chain I forgot but yeah so one is every uh, chain that is connected by a Polkadot is a different kind of chain that solves different problem and you have to learn even though it is uh, solving so it's uh, Cosmos and Polkadot uh, are solving uh, cross-chain uh, problem uh, but through different uh, mechanisms. So for in, in terms of developer, you have to learn different language everywhere and, and you have to bear the cost on, of the deployment also on different chain. And RV is a storage and there is no execution logic other than storage. Uh, they have come up with execution uh, program where you deploy the whole code onto storage and they have some 
a dynamic execution environment where you bring the code from storage and on local on, on your machine it executes that code what you have written that to store on storage so and it is javascript based to solve this problem we dojima came up with uh, cross chain middle ground where you deploy your smart contract evm uh, solidity smart contract at one place uh, we have specific cross chain instructions where if you want to swap from one chain to another chain or if you want to uh, pass message transfer from one chain to another chain you will have specific instructions how you write your solidity smart contract that hey uh, store my id point out this to some user id something like that so with cross chain instruction uh, you can execute these things where you can access liquidity if you see ethereum a uh, smart contract will access liquidity of particular chain that is ethereum and you cannot access the solana liquidity from that chain so uh, with this uh, cross chain instructions you can tell the smart contract same as how you tell on ethereum to do these functions it does on dojima it does this and with single deployment you can access the liquidity of ethereum bitcoin and solana uh, cosmos polkadot the supported chains that dojima does and and from users perspective there is a problem of interacting different chains using different wallet providers you see uh, in ethereum it is metamask and in solana it is solfair there are a lot of wallets to interact with different chains then how do you interact from single place without having knowledge of you know uh, i'm i'm interacting with binance or avalanche or rv so we uh, at dojima uh, making a uh, try to solve this problem by providing cross chain products by dojima cross, uh, using cross chain wallet and functionality as a service so when you come as a developer you need to know how to create account on ethereum how to create account on solana how to create account on rv which has different dogs so it, it becomes difficult to develop any cross chain product uh, in a span of time so with this functionality as a service we provide simple api call that hey uh, create me account for these chains or transfer token from this chain to this chain you can get a uh, lot of developers try to get a token price from different uh, providers api providers uh, like coin gecko several uh, centralized exchanges provide lot of api calls lot of api uh, prices so yeah so in the end uh, we at dojima are an evm layer 1 blockchain that allows developers to deploy at single place access the liquidity of multiple chains from single place and you deploy it once only and you don't need to worry about what language you have to learn from any other chain and you, you see uh, diff different chains support different signature mechanisms if you see evm chains they are, they are compatible with ecdsa and if you see solana polkadot uh, they support different signature mechanisms like sr2549 polkadot support three signatures sr2549 ed2549 and ecdsa but they majorly support sr and solana also supports ed2549 so and rv rsc signature mechanism so you have to understand these signature mechanisms when you want to develop anything on chain so uh, we we provide dojima packages uh, to easily do developers activities or creating account or transacting the transaction transferring tokens or getting the prices all this and yeah that's it Yeah if anyone has a question for uh,
mother you can ask so i just have one question like uh, as a developer i normally deploy uh, use solidly for example right and if i i mean i'm trying to understand if i deploy my code on the now will it get eventually be deployed on any other ebm chain or any other chain which is which i want to is that what those image can do no what we are trying to say here is you deploy your contract on dojima and what you can do is if you see uh, if you want to access ethereum token or solana token you have to deploy your smart contract on evm chain right so we have we'll have some set of smart contracts only on uh, supported chains that so when you deploy a contract you that doesn't deploy on different chains because it's it's the cost that does impact right so we don't want to do that all we want to do is you have a specific instructions that hey do something do this thing on ethereum chain when that code executes on the block that instruction will tell whatever the contract dojima contract is there on ethereum chain it, it does the thing that's it it doesn't deploy on each chain but you can interact from single place that you can access any uni uni token or aave token whatever the token it tries to access and do something there and in send response back to dojima chain so that's what it does not other than that we don't want to deploy same contract on different chains and it makes sense like your contract is sitting on ethereum chain basically pulls the data and give it back to your chain so, yes so i'm sitting at your chain i should be able to access uh, the data yeah which is present actually in the ethereum application so basically you are doing this message passing thing uh, from this chain to that chain yes and your contract on each individual chain uh, becomes basically uh, the person to whom it connects yes connect right talk yes yeah Uh, I have one more question. So, what is the like this thing? We can do it on a server, right? I can write the JavaScript code, uh, which can be, uh, has some subset of instruction and maybe some private keys, and it can get the liquidity from each of these chain. And that app can manage the cross-chain interactions, right? So, why do we need like separate infrastructure like Dojima, which is and like make uh, what is the difference here? So, so why can't we have and why can't we change? Yeah, what is decentralization? It's all about open source. So if you develop same app by yourself, why there are so many centralized exchanges? Binance, KuCoin, they are the same, right? So you want to reutilize the code or you want to rewrite the same thing? So here, what it comes is. when there is a cross chain dap on dojima you can reuse the smart contract what previously it has built right so you don't want to build the same thing so that's why there is a layer one chain rather than a centralized javascript web and web app i mean the data that you are pulling from uh, if i if i use your concept right and the data which i pulled from your server how do i uh, how do i trust on that particular server here what these guys are doing is this it's a smart contract which is pulling the data so you can actually trust on the the message which is smart contract is sending because you can any any time go and verify that in the other chain that means thank you uh, so suppose i want to transfer from this particular token from ethereum to some other chain so i need to pay the fees so this could be a new chain cash me store on fee for how this the fee works is that dojima chain also has to survive when you are communicating with other chains right so we don't depend on external endpoints due to some security issue if you rely on third party endpoints like what is the fee of ethereum chain currently in block or solana they can give us so how the way we works is our cross chain read the block of every chain and takes hermes transaction or the dojima chain transactions and we 
push the fee of Hermes related transaction to our Dojima chain that so that it tracks the fee of transaction and we do average of it. So now we got the transaction fee of every chain, right? So when there is a transfer between different chains, we charge some 2x, 3x kind of thing. So depends on uh, some parameters. So when you transfer one BTC, right? So we take, we calculate for one BTC how much we get equivalent of BNB. On on that we calculate whether he is able to pay the fee or not on Binance chain. And on top of it, we calculate whether he is able to pay, uh, we pay our fee also, like two x. If we charge two x, suppose, then one x comes to uh, liquidity pool such that you know whoever provides the liquidity they get incentivized so in that way 1x will go to the payment of the fee 1x will come to liquidity uh, pool so that's how uh, the fee structure works uh, would it be like more expensive than the centralized bridges or cheaper <coughs> so if you want to get caught you can use centralized exchange <laughs> yes, bridge. So, see uh, why in centralized exchanges it's all about your rule. And so, we should not compare with centralized exchange. I guess, right? Yeah. We cannot compare. If you if you ask me if you want to compare with other cross chain, then we can talk. How many chains it can support? Like. Is there any Scalability. So we can support till some n chains. There can be scalability issue if we increase infinite chains because our architecture works in that way. And there are different ways to solve this problem. Currently, uh, what all support? So we support seven chains. That is Bitcoin. Binance, Ethereum, Solana, Polkadot, RVU, Cosmos, Gaia chain. So we want to focus on not on every chain because if you support every chain which doesn't have liquidity, which is not famous, what's the point of running, uh, supporting them? And it increases the cost of validator. So when we want to support major liquidity chains first, then we have to see uh, if there are any problems, if there are any bugs when it goes to magnet. So on top of it, uh, we'll support other chains. So if more popular will come So yeah, we have a roadmap for it, for scalability. Uh, for currently we are looking to major chain, major liquidity chains. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for that for taking us.